All right, so uh, let me quickly remind you what we have done last time. So we introduced so-called uh, connection forms, uh, say E1, E2, E3, a frame on R3, meaning that these are unit vector fields on R3, right? E1, let's say E2 and E3. Uh, that product of EI with EJ is Kronecker delta IJ. So they are defined on all over uh, three space. And we define so-called uh, connection one forms for any vector at a tangent space of R3. I don't have a, a surface yet. This is just by definition, the covariant derivative of EI. And then you take that product with EJ. And you compute all these at, uh, at the point P. OK. Uh, all right. We had this. Uh, of course, this. W i j, if you interchange rows of uh, i and j, it turns out that this is just j i. In particular, w i i is zero. So that this matrix of connection one forms, uh, you know, this one, okay, w one one, w one two, w one three, w two one, w two two, w two three, W31, W32, and W33. Uh, because of this anti symmetric condition, this one is zero. This is W12, W13, and then this is minus W12, zero. Uh, and this is W23, and this is minus W13, W minus 23, and zero. Okay. All right. Uh, we had also defined so-called the attitude matrix. What was that? Uh, let A I J be the matrix where U is a normal uh, field. No, uh, uj, uh, here u1 is the, these are the natural fits, one, zero, zero, u2 is zero, one, zero, and u3 is zero, zero, one. Uh, this matrix aij called the attitude matrix, uh, AIJ, the attitude matrix of the frame field E1, E2, E3. Uh, and we had proved the following theorems. W is just DA times A transpose. Here DA means uh, just D of each entry of the matrix, okay? A. AIJs are just functions. AIJs are functions from R3 into R and uh, DA is just uh, their derivatives. Okay. Uh, this again got frozen. 
Okay. Uh, what else did we do? Uh, okay. We had structural equations, uh, but first we defined <coughs> so-called uh, dual one forms. <coughs> dual one forms, uh, theta one, theta two and theta three. What are these? Theta i is just uh, v dot uh, ui. Ui being the natural form, uh, natural frame uh, elements. And then we had, uh, so-called structural equations. Uh, we had this theorem, uh, Cartan equations, Cartan structural equations. The first one is this, the first structural equation is d theta i is just w i j which theta j summation over j. And the second one is w i j its derivative is just uh, summation over k w i k w k j. Okay. You just multiply the matrix W with uh, uh, actually itself, maybe it's dual, no itself, yeah, right, omega which omega, yeah. This one, uh, this is the matrix uh, over there. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's the summary of what we have done last time. Today, we will apply this, uh, you know, machinery to so-called surfaces. So, uh, chapter six, geometry of surfaces. In R3. The first section is uh, the fundamental equations. The aim of this chapter is to prove uh, the theorem of Gauss, so-called theorem egregium, the important, most important theorem of actually uh, this course. And this will be just a formal, I mean, uh, a, uh, preparation for the theorem. Uh, that theorem tells us that if you have two surfaces which are isometric to each other, then their curvatures are the same. What we mean by isometric, uh, you can uh, so you map one surface to another surface so that uh, the distance between two points in one surface is the same as the distance of the two points which are mapped, uh, which are images of these two points on the other surface, okay? So if you can map one uh, surface on some other surface, basically, then we call them uh, isometric. And Gauss theorem tells us that isometric surfaces are, uh, they have the same Gaussian curvature uh, and this, kind uh, the stuff we will do will be a preparation for that okay 
chapter 6.1 and 6.2 uh, and 6.3. Uh, no, sorry, four are kind of uh, preparations. First, uh, an adapted frame field E1, E2, E3 on a region uh let's say d not d sorry o in m the surface in r3 uh, is a, a euclidean frame frame such that such that E3, the last element of this triple is always normal, is always normal to M. Uh, so since they are all orthogonal to each other, uh, in particular, hence uh, E1 and E2 are tangent. So you pick your frame, orthonormal frame, so that at any point, uh, E1 and E2 are tangent vectors and uh, E3 is normal vector. So this is the normal vector U, okay? You find your... Uh, frame so that the last coordinate is normal to the surface, okay? Normal to the surface. You may not able to find such a triple defined on all over the uh, space uh, because otherwise, you know, the surface would be uh, so-called paralyzable, uh, but sphere is not paralyzable, but on any region like this on a small region of your surface, you can find a region like this. I mean, a triple like this defined on a region like this. Well, for example, on the sphere, okay, you may not uh, find, you may not choose this region as the whole sphere. Meaning that I can find uh, three vectors at any point so that one of them will be normal, the other one, the other two will be uh, parallel to the surface. So they will be tangent vectors uh, at any point. And these EIs will be continuous functions. That is not possible. You cannot do it on the whole sphere. What you can do, for any small region like this, you can find such triples. On some other region, you may find some other triple, okay? But not uh, one global frame covering the whole surface uh, may not be uh, possible to find, okay? That's a very big topological condition on the surface. Uh, and sphere is not like that. Paralyzable, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, by a region, region, uh, we mean uh, uh, simply connected uh, maybe not okay.
Well, it may, uh, doesn't have to be simply connected, but let's assume uh, simply connected uh, to be on the safe side. The one forms we defined for uh, any uh, actual frame, uh, they are called connection one forms for an adapted uh, frame. Okay, the one forms WIJ defined by you know this equation. J from one to three uh, are called connection one forms, one forms uh, on M. So here uh, E1, E2, E3 is an adapted form, uh, adapted frame. Uh, for that adapted frame, this one forms are called uh, connection one forms, okay? So they have a special name, okay? Here, they are just uh, uh, one forms, WIJs are some one forms, but if this is an adapted frame, then they have a name. Uh, they are called connection one forms on the surface M, okay? Stars and Shriyazim where E1, E2, E3 is an adapted frame. So it is not an arbitrary frame. First two vectors are tangent to the surface. The last vector is necessarily normal to the surface. This WIJs are called connection one forms on the surface M. Okay, here is the first fact. Uh, the shape operator is given like this. W1, 3, E1 plus W2, 3, E2. Well, maybe I should write here uh, for any P in M and V in TPM. So if you choose a tangent vector to your surface, okay, to your surface, tangent vector, then the shape operator evaluated at this point and uh, at this vector can be computed in terms of the uh, connection one forms as follows, okay? All right, so uh, let me move to other board. Okay. Now, uh, by definition, uh, the shape operator, okay, is what? Minus v, the covariant derivative along v of the normal vector u, right? But since we are in an adapted frame, hence uh, s v is just minus, u is just the third one, right? The third one. Okay, so, uh, hence, this is equal to 
what is this? Well, the uh, by definition, the covariant derivative of E3 is just given like this. So uh, minus W1, uh, no, uh, 3, 1, right? Here I have 3, so 3, 1, uh, V, E1, minus W2, uh, 3, 2, V, E2, and minus W3, 3, E3. But we know that these are just uh, anti-symmetric objects. So if I replace the places, I get uh, negative of this. So this is W1, 3, V, E1. This is just W2, 3, V, E2. And what is this? Well, this is anti-symmetric, therefore this is zero. So I have this, uh, which is uh, what we claimed, okay? Okay. Well, uh, let uh, theta i be by definition v dot e i p be the dual one forms, forms of the uh, adapted frame, E1, E2, E3, right? Adapted frame, theta i's are defined this way, okay? Adapted, uh, sorry, uh, dual one forms are defined this way. In our case, uh, okay, uh, the dual one forms are defined like this uh, using this E1, E2, E3. For R3, for R3, we are using uh, theta i's, uh, sorry, u i's, but for uh, adapted frame, uh, this is how we define them. Şunu. Uh, Yanlış yazdım herhalde değil mi? Bu UI değil. Bu uh, EI olması lazım. I am sorry. This is EI. Right. Let me check. But uh, it should be. Yes, yes, EIs. So we are just using the same definition, but this time we have an adapted frame. Okay, that's it. Uh, one quick remark is the following. If V is a tangent vector, uh, since V is perpendicular to the normal vector, which is E3, we see that, we see that theta three V, which is V dot E3 is by, you know, uh, the choice of, uh, by our choice, it is identically zero.
So for an adapted frame, we don't have any theta three, okay? It is zero because V is a tangent vector. This is the normal vector. Therefore, the dot product is zero, okay? Okay. Sanırım donmuş. Gene. Okay. So uh, we defined theta is like this, and then uh, we see that if we is an a uh, tangent vector, since it is uh, perpendicular to the normal vector, which is E3, the third uh, dual one form is zero. Okay. This is just uh, Cartan's theorem for adapted frame. Uh, if E1, E2, E3 is an adapted frame, adapted frame for M, then we have first, uh, this, this is the first structural equation. Equations. What are these? D theta one is W one to wedge W two. D theta two is W, uh, Okay, two one which theta one. W three is zero, so I don't have that uh, here. Uh, remember that here, Cartan structural equations, they are for all theta i's, uh, but in our case, there is no theta three. That's why we have only two of them. And uh, the second, structural equations. Uh, oh, okay, not second one. We have so-called this equation. This is called a symmetry equation. And then we have uh, so-called uh, Gauss's equation. And what's that? Uh, w12, it's derivative is just W13 wedge W32. And we have uh, so-called Kodazi equations. What are these? W13, uh, D of that is just W12, which W23. And derivative of 23 is W21, which W13. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, okay, uh, let me erase the board.
those equations will be just, uh, you know, uh, Cartan's equations, nothing uh, more than that. Let's see the proof. Uh, recall uh, Cartan's equations. Uh, what was that? The first one, okay, so this, I am just rewriting these equations. Uh, I, J, which theta J and uh, the second one, W i j is just W i j which W k j i k I am sorry i k and k j summation over k. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, this one. For example, so uh, and d of theta one. What is d of theta one? So w one. Here I have one, one one. <clears throat> w one one is zero. So I don't have j equals one term. I have j, uh, j equals two. W one two, and then theta two plus W13, which theta three. Okay. Sürekli duruyor bu. Okay. Uh, what about the other one? So this is zero. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, theta three is zero. So d theta three is zero, right? Theta three is zero on the surface. Therefore, its derivative is zero. But what is d theta three from Cartan's equation? So it is just uh, w. Uh, I have three here, so three one which w1 plus w32 which w2 uh, sorry not w2 theta2 so this summation is zero well that is exactly uh, this equation okay so uh, the first two of them are just cartan's equations uh, what about the other ones Uh, well, yeah, this time, uh, <clears throat> you know, you will just use again the same fact. Uh, so let me just leave the uh, proof of uh, proofs of three and four are similar. Okay. Uh, and left as an exercise. Okay. I don't want you to memorize all these, okay? What you should uh, know, uh, you should know that such things exist and uh, you should know how they are defined and you should know uh, how to compute, you know, these objects, but 
you may, uh, you know, take a look at uh, their definitions and theorem statements of theorem. There is no, uh, I mean, I don't want you to memorize all these equations, uh, but you should be able to just play with this as I, you know, do on the board, okay? Definition of this was this, and then we take derivative and so on. This is normal to this one. So the inner product is zero and so on. This kind of arguments you should be able to make, but don't try to memorize all these, okay? Of course, there will be some parts you have to uh, really memorize. Uh, we will come to that, but I don't, uh, you know, uh, want or require that you memorize all those formulas. Okay, now, we have uh, finished section 6.1. Okay. Form computations. So kind of more computations. Again, uh, this is a surface uh, and uh, E1, E2, E3, and adapted frame on M. Uh, Theta is our dual forms. Uh, dual forms. For the adapted frame. Uh, we have this fact. Okay, lemma. Uh, the basic formulas. So they are called basic formulas. Okay, if phi is a one form on M and uh, mu is a two form, on M, then phi can be written. Uh, this is not basic, but basis formulas. Because, you know, these are, they form a basis, sorry. This is just uh, okay. So any one form, is written like this in terms of this dual one forms, theta one and theta two, and the coefficients of this one form in the basis theta one, theta two, uh, we don't have theta three. Uh, the coefficients are just the values of this one form on the basis vectors E1 and E2, okay? And for the two form, again, we have something similar, this two form is just the value of mu of the form on the vectors E1, E2, and then I have this one, two form here. So any one, any two form is just this two form with a coefficient in front, and that coefficient is nothing but the value of mu on the basis vectors E1, E2. Since it's a two form, it has to eat two vectors, right? Yes, okay. No, 
this is a scalar, this is a two form. Now you will understand better when once I write down the proof. Okay. So proof. Uh, since E1 and E2 form a basis, a basis for the tangent space at any point, it is enough to check Uh, check the identities uh, on these vectors. What we mean, if you have two uh, one forms, uh, and if you wanna show that they are equal, it is enough to show that they are equal on basis vectors because any other vector can be written in terms of this basis vectors and everything is linear. So if these two forms agree on basis vectors, then they agree on the whole tangent space. Okay, that's the idea. So let's see, I want to show that I want to show that, uh, okay. I want to show that this one form phi is equal to this one form, right? Uh, a number times theta one plus another number times theta two. So I'll just compute this one and this one on basis vectors, E1 and E2, and see that they are uh, the same. Okay, once I do that, I'll be done. Let's see. Uh, so let me start with the right-hand side. This real number times theta one, phi of E2 times theta two, evaluated on the first basis vectors. What is this? Well, this is just this real number times theta one of E1 plus this real number times theta two of E1. But these are dual vectors. So this is Kronecker delta ij here I have i and j both one, so this is just one. And here i and j agree, doesn't agree, so this is zero. So what is the result? This is phi of E1. And similarly, if you write here E2, so the same thing, okay, E2, you will obtain this time, you will have here E2, so this term will be zero, but here I will have theta to E2, that will be one. So I will just get phi of E2. So what we see is then this one form and phi agree on both tangent, uh, both tangent vectors, right? So this form and phi agree on E1 and E2. Therefore, this form, whatever it is, it should be phi. So hence, phi is equal to phi of E1 theta one plus phi of E2 theta two. Yeah, I mean, E3 is, uh, I mean, theta three, we don't have theta three. So if you have a one form, which is defined on the tangent space, uh, you know, uh, E3, uh, sorry, uh, theta three 
cannot be a part of it because it is identically zero. Let's see the second one. It is more interesting. Okay, I can erase this part. So the second equation, this time, this time uh, we will show that this two form, this two form mu is equal to uh this real number time this two form okay now mu of e1 e2 theta1 wedge theta2 so i take this form and i would like to compute this on this pair of uh, basis elements. Well, this is just a scalar. So I just take it outside. And then I have this two form, which is defined as the wedge of two one forms evaluated on this pair of vectors. Two forms are basically determinants, right? Or they, they are just area forms. Uh, so this is nothing but this determinant, determinant of what? Theta one computed on the first one, theta one computed on the second one, and then theta two defined, uh, computed on the first one and theta two, computed on the second one, just the determinant of this gadget. So this is mu E1, E2. Well, what is this? This is just the identity matrix one, zero, zero, one. So this is just one. So I have mu E1, E2. So what we have seen is then this two form, this two form, okay, computed on this pair of vectors is equal to this two form computed and on the same pair of vectors. And uh, since I am on a two dimensional vector space, uh, there is only one meaningful pair of vectors you can compute a two form, right? Uh, they should be just pair of elements which form uh, a basis for the tangent space. And uh, therefore, this two form and this two form must be the same. So hence, mu E1, E2, theta one which theta two is equal to mu. <clears throat> so that's it. Uh, Okay, let me stop the recording.